Welcome to this Grants Portal How-To video, presented by FEMA's Public Assistance Training Section. This video presents the basics of using FEMA's Grants Portal application as a Public Assistance Grant recipient. FEMA uses the term recipient to mean a state, tribal, or territorial entity that receives and administers Public Assistance Federal Awards. FEMA uses the term applicant to mean a state, tribal, territorial, or local government or private nonprofit entity that may request and receive subawards under a recipient's award. FEMA also uses the term subrecipient to mean an applicant for which funding has been obligated and transferred. Title II, Part 200 of the Code of Federal Regulations further discusses these definitions. Join us now for the Grants Portal Basic Overview for Recipients. All right, we're going to talk about um, Grants Portal Recipient Basic Overview today. The webinar should take approximately 60 minutes. Any browser should work. So let's get started. So in Grants Portal, a recipient should receive an email with a Grants Portal username and password on behalf of Grants Portal from support at pagrants.fema.gov. If uh, you as a recipient do not receive this e an email from them, check your spam folder. Filters sometimes prohibit emails from going directly to the inbox. So you're going to sign into Grants Portal at this website, the HTTPS grantee.fema.gov. And it's going to look similar to this, um, the sign into your account with the username and password. And when you sign in, you're going to See this window, it's a privacy notice. It says that you're going to use the software um, and you won't do anything you're not supposed to while you're in here. Please read all of this information and then click the blue accept button. We have another attention window. It says you're about to use a US government information system and you will behave yourself while you're in here and not do anything you're not supposed to. So we have to read all that information, click the accept button. Both of these windows are going to pop up every time you log into Grants Portal. One little tip is you can tab, tab. After you read all that information, you're familiar with it. And when you sign in, put your username, password. You can hit tab, tab, and it'll take you through those windows. Next is the Welcome Wizard. Grants Portal has a lot of these um, little tabs of information that you have to fill out before you can proceed through Grants Portal. This one, the first one is Start, and it's just going to give you some direction. Use the previous and next buttons to navigate through the steps and fill out your information, and then click the blue Next button. Welcome to Grants Portal. We're going to reset your password. You're going to use the username that was in that email that you received, and then you're going to change your password to something that you'll remember. It has to be 15 characters uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special characters. And then you're going to type it in again for accuracy. When both of these match and you've met all the criteria, this orange line will turn green. And you can click on the Next button and move on. So now we're at the third tab, which is the security question. There's several security questions you can choose. There's an arrow that you can drop down and see a list of them. You're going to enter a security answer, which just has to be at least five characters. You're going to re-enter your security answer for accuracy. When you put in those answers, jot that down somewhere, email it to yourself, because when you call the hotline, they're not going to know what your childhood nickname was. So you need to keep that information. After you have those entered, you can click on the Next button. Then we're going to go to the fourth tab, which is Finalize. It's going to show your username going to show your password and stars so nobody can look over your shoulder and see that password, your security question, and your security answer that you've jotted down somewhere. And click the blue Submit button. You're all the way through the process. It's going to say, congratulations, your account has been activated. And use the button below to continue. So you're going to click on the blue button to return to the login screen. When you get to the login screen, you're going to enter the username that was in that email. And now you're going to use that 15 character password. And then click the blue sign in button. So that is how to create a recipient account in Grants Portal. So you have a recipient account, and then we'll have subrecipients who need Grants Portal accounts. 
If a subrecipient does not have a grants portal account registered, there's two ways to register that account, and I'm going to go over that with you. But before I do, I want to um, just give a little clarification. An applicant is an organization that has applied to um, for possible grant reimbursement through FEMA. A subrecipient is one who has been deemed eligible for for possible reimbursement through FEMA. So we're going to use those two terms interchangeably. And I just wanted to clarify what the applicant and subrecipient was. For this purpose, there's not a lot of difference, so we're going to use those interchangeably. I just wanted you to be familiar. So for the subrecipient to set up an account, there's two ways to do that. Number one, the recipient can send an invitation to the subrecipient. The second one is, the subrecipient can now register themselves along with, with submitting their RPA. And I'm going to take you to the demo site so I can show you exactly what this looks like. So here we have our sign-in um, screen like we saw earlier. We're going to enter our username, the one that you would have received in the email. I'm going to enter my email address. And then that 15 character password that you created numbers and special characters, and then tab on through. Mine's going to look a little bit different because I'm using the demo site, but I'm going to sign in as a recipient so you'll be able to see pretty much all of what um, is accurate for you. So one of the two ways that a subrecipient can have a Grants Portal account is when the recipient sends an invite to the subrecipient. And I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So to, in, so to invite a single subrecipient, you're going to go to the navigational menu, which is right here. I kind of like to look at this as a file cabinet because it has drawers that you can open. And in the drawers, there are, full, there are these are the drawers. There are folders that you can open, and you'll see what I'm talking about, and then documents that you can manage. Logically, that makes sense to me. So we're going to go to my organization, which is the recipient's information, organization profile. Then here are those drawers I was talking about. So we're going to come down to subrecipient organization profiles, go over to the right-hand side, click on manage, And we're going to invite a new organization to Grants Portal. So we're going to click on the green button at the top that says New Organization. When you click on it, you get a drop-down. We're going to click on Invite. The requesting organization, right now we're in Colorado because that's what I choose, chose from the demo site. You may be New Mexico, New York, um, a tribe, the Winnebago tribe, um, the Ackerman tribe, any kinds of Whatever state, tribe, or territory that you're from will appear up here in the requesting organization. The organization name, we have to put one in there. We're going to invite the city of Ponca. Okay. And then we look at the next, next field, and there's a drop-down. If it's a city, we're going to choose city or township government. Their first name of the contact information is John Brown. His phone number is 555-555-5555. And his email is john.brown at ponca.org. Ponca OK, so when we have the, all that information filled out, we can click Save. When I click Save, an email is going to be sent to um, John Brown at the City of Ponca to um, invite him to set up an account in Grants Portal. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this a little bit quicker because you can invite multiple subrecipients um, at a time. So to, to invite those multiple subrecipients, you're going to go back, similar to what we did for the single, go to My Organization, Organization Profile. Just like we did before, you're going to open that drawer that says Subrecipient Organization Profiles. Go over to the right and 
Click the tab that says Manage. Now our two buttons, our two green buttons, come open at, up at the top. And last time we chose New Organization to send that invite. This time we're going to click Import. We click Import. You get um, an option that says Download Template. Click on Download Template. We're going to open it with Excel because it's going to be an Excel spreadsheet. And on that spreadsheet is um, the same information that we enter to invite a single recipient. It's going to have the organization name, organization type, the point of contact, first name, last name, email, phone number. Um, the thing, one thing I want to stress with this template is do not change any formatting. There's an embedded formatting in that template that um, Grants Portal uses to enter the information into the appropriate places. Also, do not skip a line on that spreadsheet. It should be consecutively one, two, three, so don't skip a line. I can't show you a picture of that template. However, when we go through the process, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, so stick with me. So you're going to open it with Excel, click OK, and you're going to save it on your computer, and you're going to uh, remember where you saved it because you're going to have to upload that back to Grants Portal. You're going to upload your information. So after you've entered all that information, maybe 20, 30, 50, could be up to 100 subrecipients that you're going to invite to Grants Portal, then you're going to come back over and you're going to click on the Import button, and you're going to upload that spreadsheet. So you remember where you saved it on your computer. It's all accurate, and you're going to click on Upload Spreadsheet. You're going to find it on your computer. It will be called, mine is Organization Invites Import Template. I'm going to open that. Oops, I have to choose it first. Very similar to adding an attachment to an email. Choose it and then open it, and look what happens. So if you look up here at the top, it says, Records with Errors. I have one. And I did this purposely so you can see what happens if you have an error. I only put in the name of the organization, which is my city. I did not put in the organization type. Look what it says. There's an error. The organization first name, it's going to tell you where the mistakes are that you made. So when you, if you make an error and it shows you a number up here, then you can go back to the template that you, you can cancel the import, go back to the template on your computer because you know where you saved it, change that information to where it's accurate, and upload it again. When you upload it again, it should say zero, and there will be a green commit import button up here. So we're going to cancel this import because we had errors. But when you have um, the template ready, it'll, you'll, you'll see the green commit import button, and it will upload it to Grants Portal, and all of those um, organizations that you have on that list will receive an email inviting them to set up their account in Grants Portal. Much quicker than doing it one at a time. All right, the second way I told you that um, there was two ways an applicant or a subrecipient can set up and or register an or organization in Grants Portal. I'm going to show you the second way. So if you look at what's on my window, it's the sign in menu for Grants Portal. You have the sign in button the blue sign-in button, but underneath there's a hyperlink and it says register your organization and request public assistance. This is where an applicant or a subrecipient can come to do both of those processes by themselves. I'm going to show you this because you may have a subrecipient or an applicant who needs a little bit of help, so being familiar with it, with it might be helpful. You're going to click on the hyperlink. It's going to say, Welcome to FEMA Grants Portal Registration. Process is designed to assist you in your local government account. Here's something that's really important. The applicant or subrecipient has one hour to complete the process. The process is pretty straightforward. Unless you have some VPN or network issues, you should definitely should be able to complete it within an hour. It's going to say, please verify you are a human by clicking the link below. So let's click the checkbox and see if we're a human. You may have to click on some street signs or crosswalks. You know how those little pop-ups pop up to verify that you're a human. But 
I think it believes us this time, so we'll, we'll move on. All right, here's some tabs, again, that Grants Portal is famous for. So we have to fill out all the information on those five tabs before we can, before an applicant or subrecipient can set up, register their organization and request an RPA. So first thing, they're going to have to um, say which state or territory is your organization. We're going to select, um, let's select Arizona. Which emergency disaster do you want to request an RPA for? This was developed specifically for the COVID-19 event. So your only option, your only event, is going to be the COVID-19. Whatever state you choose on the top field is going to have the coinciding event on the second field. Also, at the bottom you see this hyperlink. It says View FEMA's Emergency Disaster Information. If you click on this hyperlink, it's going to take you to FEMA's website where there's additional guidance on the COVID-19 disaster event process. And we'll click the Next button. We're on the second tab, which is Organization. We chose Arizona. We have Arizona's event, the COVID-19. The organization name, let's do the City of Diamond. Let's do City of Diamondbacks. That's their baseball team. So City of Diamondbacks. Organization type, well, it's a city, so we're going to choose city or township government. Their EIN number, we're just going to, they should know the EIN number. Their employee identification number comes from the IRS. We're going to enter 111111 just to muddle on through. Their DUNS number, we'll just enter once as well. And then click the blue Next button. We get to the third tab, which is Contact Information. We'll enter primary contact information and notice the asterisks beside this, beside these fields. Those have to be entered. They're required. So the first name, we'll say this is John Starr. And his title is um, the mayor of the city of Diamondback. And his phone number is the good old 555-555-5555. And his email is going to be john.star at cityofdiamondbacks.org. Okay, remember um, the recipient's doing this, and so if he wants, if they want to put in an alternate contact information, they can. However, there's no asterisk, so it's not required. They can move on through and click next. Address, you have to put information in where the um, asterisks are, so we'll put one Diamondback Lane. We don't have to put address two, it's not required, in Diamondback, Arizona. Zip code, let's say 23423. What county are they in? Let's say they're in Graham County. Look at the mailing address. Asterisk says, only if different than a primary address. So if they have a post office box mailing address, they would need to fill out that information. Otherwise, they can click Next and move on. We're at the last tab, which is Submit. The applicant is going to review their information for accuracy, make sure everything is, is correct. If not, they can go click on a tab and go back and correct the information and then move on through. And we're going to click Submit. When we click Submit, a green congratulations window is going to open and tell the applicant their account for Grants Portal and their RPA, Request for Public Assistance, has been submitted for review by the recipient and FEMA. An email will follow with an acceptance or denial information. So that's the new process where the applicant can set up their own GP account and request their RPA at the same time. So let's go back to the other demo site, back to the home page. Approving a submitted organization invitation. So regardless if the recipient sends the invitation asking them, asking an organization to set up an account, or if an applicant does the process themselves, the recipient still must approve or deny that request. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. 
If you go over to our navigational menu, or our file cabinet if you will, you're going to click on My Organization, because that's the recipient's information, Organization Profile, Subrecipient Organization Profiles. Click on um, that drop down, which will expand, and then we'll see the two tabs. One is Active, and one is Invitations or Requests. So we're going to look at status. We have right now incomplete status is chosen, but if you click on the drop down, you can see there's incomplete, which means they may have not entered all of their information. They've been invited, but maybe they haven't submitted their information yet. What we're looking for to approve is submitted. So we know we have all their information as a recipient. We just need to approve it. So let's click on Jones City. And here's their information. We have the state, we have the organization name, we have the organization town, the organization which is a city, we have their um, EIN number, and we have workflow. If we click on workflow, then we can, as a recipient, you can review more information and determine um, whether to approve or reject this invitation. So you can look at this information, make your determination, and if, we, if you decide that we can't approve this request for our GP account, then we're going to click on Approve. You can enter a comment, but notice there's no asterisk, so you don't have to. And then you would click on the Approve button. If you decide that maybe this needs a little more attention and right now you can't approve it, you're going to click on Reject. And you're going to get a reason. And notice there's an asterisk there, so you have to put something in this box before Grants Portal will let you move forward and then click the Reject button. So that is going to be how you um, approve or um, reject a, an invitation to set up an account in Grants Portal. All right, you're, as a recipient and an applicant, there's going to be a lot of uploading documents in Grants Portal. And there's several places that you can upload documents to you can upload documents to your organization profile, which is right here. You can see here's the insurance profile, and we're going to look at that. If you upload them to your organization profile, that's going to be typically documents that are used during multiple events, like your PA admin plan, um, payroll or procurement policies. You can also upload them to an applicant event profile. These are going to be documents that are used during a specific event. You can also kind of drill down and upload them to projects. It may be a specific timesheet, invoice, or photo on a project. And you can even upload them into damages, just so you have um, an awareness of where the um, documents are. Most everyone is going to upload an insurance document. So I'm going to walk you through the process to upload an insurance document, and you're going to get the gist of how to upload any document. So on the navigational menu, again, you're going to click on My Organization, which is the recipient information. Click on Organization Profile. And go over and open that drawer that says Insurance Policy. When you find insurance policy, go over to the right, and there's a button that says Upload Insurance Documents. Click on that tab, and it's going to tell you that you can drag and drop files here, or you can click to select files. So you can click on it, find the insurance document. I have one for Rhode Island in here, an insurance document. So very similar to adding an attachment to an email, you're going to click on the document and click Open. You're going to get a window that you're going to see Edit and Remove. If you've chosen the wrong document, you can remove. If um, When you click on Edit, it's not to edit the document, it's to edit um, how you're going to save that document. So your file name, your file may, name may be uh, 4619 to 4, 6, 20, uh, City Hall Building Insurance. OK, 
Okay. You want to put something in there where you know the effective dates of that insurance policy and what it covers. You may have an event two years from now and um, that you're working on. You're going to have a new policy with effective dates, but you may have to refer back to this event and you're going to think which policy was in effect when I uh, was working on that event and you'll have that information in there. In the description, you can put whatever helps you in there. It could be that you put the expiration date of the policy. So you might put um, expiration 4620. Category, you can select whatever you want. For this instance, we're going to select insurance policy and then save that document. Right now it says you have a, a document pending upload. Do you want to upload this document? Is the file name correct? And we're going to click on Upload Pending Documents. And you'll see a success window in the bottom right telling you um, that we have uploaded that document. Something else you can do in Grants Portal, I'm going to go back to the main page, to the dashboard, is you can submit a request for public assistance on behalf of a subrecipient or an applicant. Um, you may have an applicant who's not very computer savvy. They may be completely overwhelmed with what's going on and need some assistance. And as a recipient, you can submit an RPA for that subrecipient. And I'm going to walk you through how to do that. If you go to your dashboard, click on dashboard on your navigational menu, you're going to see this yellow window, kind of we call it the yellow brick road, and you're going to see this blue click here to submit RPA on behalf of your recipients. So if you click on that hyperlink, it's going to take you to look more tabs that Grants Portal is famous for. So you're going to fill out that information. First on the start tab, it's going to say welcome. You're going to enter information for an RPA for a subrecipient. Something I want to point out is prior to starting this process, you may wish to click here to review your organization profile to ensure all your information is up to date. So when you click here, that's going to take you over to organization profile where you can change some information if you need to. If all that is correct already and you're assured of that, you can click the next button to move on to the next tab. The organization, remember you're, you're um, submitting a RPA on behalf of a subrecipient, so they've already set up an account in Grants Portal. So some of this information will auto-populate. We're going to choose the town of Karenville. The event, we're working in Colorado, so that's going to pop up. Did they participate in PDAs or preliminary damage assessment? For this event, it's an emergency event. We're not doing PDAs, so we're going to say no and click Next. We get to the third tab, which is Contacts. Remember I told you there was already some information populated, so for the town of Karenville, Jane Doe is the mayor, so Jane's information is going to auto-populate. Now remember when the applicant entered that information for their, to set up their Grants Portal um, account, they had the option, they didn't have the option of putting in primary contact information, but they did have the option of putting alternate contact information. And so we left that blank, so it's going to be blank. Click on the Next button. You're going to review the addresses. If there is um, an inaccuracy, then you can click on the Change button and go in and manipulate that information. You can also do that with a mailing address. Click on the Change button beside that. And then click the Next button. The fifth tab is Other Information. You get a Comments window. Notice there's no asterisk, so we don't have to put anything in there. We can click Next. Final is Submit. So as a recipient, you would look over their information for Karenville, make sure it's accurate, and then you can submit that RPA on their behalf. So we'll click Submit, and it says, congratulations, your request for public assistance has been successfully processed. Over the next several days, you'll receive additional information on the status of your RPA. So as a recipient, if you need to do an RPA for a subrecipient, that's your instructions on how to do that. So regardless of if the applicant does their RPA or you do the RPA for them, as a recipient, a state, tribe, or territory, you will need to approve 
the request for public assistance, approve or deny. So I'll walk you through how to do that in Grants Portal. So you're going to go back over to your navigational menu. We're going to click on My Task right here in the middle. Click on My Task. Tasks are processes that must be completed before Grants Portal, the Grants Portal process can move forward. Um, you're going to come down to Workflow Items. And my workflow items opens up. You're going to click on the arrow beside filters, which is right there. OK, and the RPAs are going to appear below. The request for public, public assistance are going to um, appear right here. And if you look at the status field, you can see that all these are pending approval. So we'll click on one. OK, let's choose this top one, which is 5789. We'll click on the magnifying glass to drill in and see the information on that one. Now, as a recipient, you would review that information and make a determination on whether or not um, they were eligible. Look down here at the late submission. RPA was submitted late. This may be something to consider. But if you think that they're eligible, you're going to click on the green eligible button. And you can enter a comment if you want. There's no asterisk. And then click on Eligible. Or if something in here just doesn't appear right and you think that they're ineligible, as a recipient, you can click Ineligible. And look, there's an asterisk beside Reason. You're going to have to put something in this box before you click Ineligible. And that's how you would approve a request for an RPA. Now, with this event, um, we understand that there's going to be a lot of RPAs. And so our business architecture folks decided that it may be helpful if we did a bulk RPA approval. And I'm going to show you how to do that. OK, so of course we're going to go to grantee.fema.gov. That's our Grants Portal site. You're going to sign in. So we're going to go to the Navigational menu. On the Navigational menu, you're going to go down to Utilities. Click on Utilities. And it's going to open up some drawers. And we're looking for Review RPAs. Click on Review RPAs. It's going to ask you to select an event. And it gives you a drop down. So click on the drop down. Find your event. Click on the event. And it's going to pop up in that window. When it pops up in that window, it's automatically going to populate the RPAs for that event. Here are all the RPAs. The disaster needs to be approved. So since there are so many, you can click on Select All. You can select them individually. If you select all and you see that there's one that uh, may need just a little bit more review and you're not ready to approve that one yet, you can click the Undo Select button. And you will see the ones that are selected are going to be in light green. If you click the Undo Select button, that green will go away on this specific one. And you won't have the option to approve it. Everything is highlighted in green, has been selected. You can also filter by private nonprofits, PNPs. You can include them, yes, or not then include them, and select no. And once you have, you've reviewed them all and you know which ones you want to approve, and they're all in green, you've reviewed them well, I can't stress that enough. It has to be, go over it with a fine tooth comb. You can click the green bulk approve button at the top. When you click that bulk approve button, you're going to get uh, checks and balances that says, please review to ensure the correct applicants are selected for approval. Review them one more time. You can put in any comments down here in the box if you like. There's not an asterisk, so you don't have to. And then you're going to click the blue button that says Bulk Approve. Bulk Approve is successful. All RPA selected have been sent to FEMA for their reviews. And you'll click the OK button. And that's the new process of Bulk Approval. I hope it saves you as the, the recipient some time, and, and it goes smoothly. So I want to talk to you about creating and managing uh, recipient user accounts. 
go back to Grants Portal. Okay, as a recipient, you can add roles. Uh, roles are basically permissions on what a staff member can manipulate in Grants Portal. You can reset passwords. You can send temporary passwords. You can reset security questions. Um, you can create a new user account. So let's look at it as if we had a new person coming into the recipient's office and they're going to work in Grants Portal, but they do not have an account. I'm going to show you how to set one of those up. You're going to go over to your navigational menu, which is my file cabinet. I'm going to click on my organization, which is recipient information. I'm going to open that drawer. This is organization profile. I'm going to go over to that folder that says personnel. And then go over to the right and you're going to find the Manage button. So this person that's coming in has never had a Grants Portal account um, and has, can't manipulate any information in Grants Portal. So we'll go up to the green button on the top right that says Create. Your organization name will appear, whatever organization you're working with. Uh, if you're the state of New Mexico, state of Colorado, a tribe or a territory, that'll populate. Your first name, let's get a, a, a little creative here. Let's have uh, Rainy Waters. I have to fill out their first name and last name. We don't have to put an initial because um, it's not required. There's no asterisk. Title, this is going to be your personnel manager. Email is going to be rainy.waters at Colorado. Dot org. Type that in again for accuracy. We don't have to put a phone number. There's no asterisk. We don't have to put a mobile phone. And the username automatically populates, and it's most generally their email. So when you have all that information in and it's correct, you can click the Save button. We'll get a success window in the bottom right. This says the personnel record was created successfully. So now Rainy Waters has an account in Grants Portal. However, Mr. Waters can't do anything because we haven't given him permission to do anything in Grants Portal. So we're going to look up his account by entering his last name in this box. All right, so we, when we enter the last name, sometimes if there's multiple, you can enter comma, space, and their first name. So we're going to click on Manage beside his name. And we can see there's the name. There's his title. Um, he's active. This is the username. Should we have to change that username, you can click on the Edit button. He's active. His account is not locked. If he needs a password reset, you can click on the blue button to send him a temporary password. And if he forgot what his nickname was as a child, you can uh, reset the security question by clicking that blue button. For this purpose, we're going to go down to Roles and see what we're going to let Rainy Waters do in Grants Portal. So we're going to go down to Organization Roles, come over to the right to Manage, and this window pops up with Assigned Roles and permissions preview. So Rainy Waters is going to we have his name right up there so we know which roles we're editing, who we're editing roles for. We're going to come down and click on Personnel Manager because Mr. Waters is our new personnel manager. If you go over to permissions preview, you can see what Mr. Waters can do with the personnel manager roles. He can manage staff and he can create new staff. That's the only two things he can do. See the green check mark? Everything else is in red. So if we think we might want to let him do just a little bit more, let's see uh, what account manager permissions have. So now we can see he can do, he can manage staff, he can create new staff, he can also manage contact information and view login history. So they can, he can have more than one role if you need to give him extra permissions. One thing that's really kind of neat about um, assigned roles is if you want to know what a personnel manager actually does, what their description is, you can click on that question mark and it'll show the role description. The same thing with a project POC or primary PA coordinator. Now, 
If Mr. Waters works there for six months, he gets sick, he needs to be off for a month for some illness, Lord forbid, then we can give him read-only access. You can click on read-only access, um, and you can see he can still view information and review information, but he cannot manipulate any information with just read-only access. So that is how you would assign roles and permissions in Grants Portal. Okay, you may have some tasks to complete as a recipient in Grants Portal. Um, if you have tasks to complete, that may be holding somebody else up because you may have to do a step before they can continue on. So it's always good to watch how many tasks you have to do. So over on the navigational menu again, you're going to click on My Task. You can go into My Task two different ways. You can click on My Task, or you can go over to the right, and there's the bell. You can click on the bell, and it will take you to the same place that shows Incomplete Task. You're going to open that drawer that says Tasks, and it's going to show a list of things that um, you need to do. They're going to be assigned in red. So you can click on Review to review that information and go through the process that you need to do to um, let the, the flow of the process continue. So looking at my dashboard, if I click on Dashboard on my navigation menu, you can see this blue square thing. We call this a tile. A tile is basically a shortcut to information in Grants Portal. Rather than having to manipulate filters every time you want to view some information, you can click on that tile and it'll take you directly to that information. So if you go to My Organization, let's say we want to look at projects that the recipient has. So click on Projects. We're going to go over and expand the filters to see how we can filter what information we can find. Our event's not going to change. Um, our status, we can see what's inactive for PA. We can see the project statuses, if they've been withdrawn, consolidated. Does it have a request for information? What type is it? Is it a standard, specialized, uh, expedited? Is it a large project or a small project? Or we want all projects. What category is it? We have all the categories listed there. What process step is it in? Um, so for this purpose, let's see how many uh, large Cat C projects we have that are active for PA. Actually, let's see what kind of, um, let's see if we have any Cat Ds for all projects. You have to go down and when you select the category, you're going to click Apply Selection. Here we're going to Run Query. This is a little bit different. This is kind of a new step. If you're used to Grants Portal, they used to populate automatically. Now we have to hit the Run Query button. Oh, we have no Cat, cat D um, in there. So let's see if we have any utilities, Cat Fs. We'll apply the selection and run our query. Well, that's going to give us D and F. Let's clear those out and let's see if we have any uh, cat B, large, oop, apply selection. Let's see if we have any large projects. Run query, and we do. We have four large projects. One is specialized, three is expedited. So if we want to see how many large projects we have for cat B, we can go through this process and set the filters, or we can add a tile on our dashboard so we don't have to go through this every time. So you can save the filtered list. So come over here by Run Query. Save that filtered list. It's going to ask us what we want to name it. We're going to name it Cat B Large Projects and click Save. You get a success. Uh, window at the bottom right. Now we've created this filter, we've saved this filter list, but if you look over here, there's an open yellow star. An open yellow star says that it has not been added to our dashboard yet. But if we click on that open yellow star, it's going to turn solid, and at the bottom 
we get a success window that says dashboard tile successfully added. So we're going to go over to our dashboard and we have our Cat B large project tile. So if I click on that Cat B large projects, looky there, there's our Cat B projects. Now if we go back to our dashboard and we want to know what small Cat B projects we have, we just click on this tile and there it is. You don't have to use the filters every time. So you can, you can change those around. You can, if you decide that they're not valuable to you, you can click the red X in the upper right hand corner and delete them. You can also move them around and put them to how it's logically working for you. You can also in Grants Portal, you can add a widget. A widget's a little bit different than a tile because it has some embedded filters in it, so we can't we can't manipulate it quite as much. We have to click on Intelligence and then Widgets. This is the type of widgets that you can insert on your dashboard. For this purpose, I'm going to do the applicant status table. That's very helpful for recipients. So click on the green Add to Dashboard. And then you're going to go over to Event. We're working on that Colorado event. Organization, you can select the recipient information or we can collect sub-recipient information. We're going to do recipient information, which is my organization, and then click the Add button. We get a success window at the bottom in green. So if we go over to our dashboard, you can see that we have our widget on there. You can move it around too, just like you can the tiles. You might want to put those underneath. Um, but it's going to show you how many RPAs you have. How many eligible applicants, how many PDMGs are assigned, how many exploratory calls are completed, how many are pending, how many are overdue. And as information is added into Grants Portal, this information is going to update. So it should always be accurate with the information that's been entered into Grants Portal. So that's how you add tiles and widgets. So if you don't want this widget anymore, just click on that red X and it goes away. And you can add multiple widgets, multiple tiles on your dashboard. We're almost finished, but I want to show you over here under my name, then you can see the sign out button. It's always a good habit to get into to sign out uh, when you're finished with Grants Portal. You can also go down to the bottom on Release Notes. This is the sprints or the updates that's happening in Grants Portal. So if we look at Release 6, Sprint 6.1, you can see that this happened on 3.27.20. And they created a direct request for public assistance, an RPA, and account creation. So that is the, um, where the applicant can go in and create their own account and do their RPA. If we look at a previous sprint, this one is happened on 3-15-2020. And it's going to show you the changes. Remember we had, uh, when I said those used to automatically populate, but now you have to use the Run Query button. Here it is. Changes to filter will no longer automatically update to the project shown. Users will need to click the Run Query button to update the results. So if you've done something in Grants Portal repeatedly and it's not working, click over on um, the release notes and see what they've updated and it may help you out. All right, another thing I want to show you is resources. Over on the navigational menu is resources. Click on Resources. You get two tabs. One is Physician Assist and one is Job Aids, Guides, and Checklist. If you click on the arrow by Physician Assist, it opens up and shows you exactly, you can open these documents and download them. It'll show you exactly what a PDMG does, the process that, processes that they use. It'll even tell you what an FCO, a Federal Coordinating Officer, what their position is and what they need to do during events. So you can download those, any of that information. The second one is Job Aids, Guides, and Checklist. If you'll notice, there is a recipient Grants Portal user manual that you can download. A lot of the information that I presented to you today, you can find in that recipient user manual. There's also an app applicant <laughs> Grants Portal user manual. If you have an applicant or a sub-recipient who's struggling, this might be valuable to them. 
There's also a PA fact sheet, uh, site inspector information, a lot of information under resources that, that you can utilize at any time. And so can your applicants or subrecipients. They can utilize this information as well. So that is almost the end of our webinar. This is going to show you the uh, Grants Portal hotline. It's always staffed with very knowledgeable pers persons that have uh, great skills in, in Grants Portal. Email support, if you have a question, you can email FEMA Recovery PA Grants. YouTube videos are very helpful. They added some uh, last week, so there's some new ones on there. We've listed the IS-1002 uh, course, which is Grants Portal. And the 1010 course, which is Emergency Protective Measures, those may be helpful as you go through this event process. And then if you click this link, there's an IS course list for EMI, or the Emergency Management Institute. If you're new to PA, there's some valuable information in there. To learn more about Grants Portal, FEMA offers other classes, webinars, and manuals. You can also contact the Grants Manager and Portal Hotline at 866 337-8448 or email FEMA-recovery-PA-grants at FEMA.dhs.gov for additional support. Thank you for watching.